Hey folks, uh, how's it going? How's it going on this Tuesday afternoon? For today's video, we're gonna do another one of my makeup archives videos. I have delved deep into the archives of the internet to look at the year 2013. <laughs> I am so excited actually about this series. I've been having a lot of fun with it. After I get to a certain point where the archives no longer make sense, I think I'm gonna go like way back in like the 90s and stuff. So like, yeah, get excited for that. Today we're gonna dig into uh, 2013. I went through Temtalia's archives, Musings of a Muse, Pop Sugar, Glamour, Allure, Google in general, and um, there were some real cultural resets in 2013, I have to say. Um, so let's just dig right into it. Actually, before, I have a P.O. box now. That will be in the description. I had some people asking me. I have one, so there's that. Okay, let me grab my phone. So I'm not touching on like the holiday collections, mainly because I did an entire video during Vlogmas talking about the holiday collections from like 2010 to 2014 as a collab with Smokey Glow like in December. So if you wanna hear more about like holiday collections in general from that era, link to that video will be in a card. But I did miss this one in that video. Mac Punk Couture Collection for Winter 2013. I don't remember this collection at all, but there was an eyeshadow quad, there were pigments, it was super bright and they had three different pigments that were true chartreuse, neo orange, and magenta madness. So it was a lot of bright colors, a lot of like, I don't even want to say like cyberpunk, but like kind of cyberpunk before cyberpunk was a trend. The packaging was really cool. The branding was really cool. Mac always really went above and beyond with photo shoots for the collection launches. And honestly, like, I wish I would have been in one of those boardrooms discussing the photo shoots. Holy crap, they were amazing. Ooh, there was nail polish too. We are gonna get into some nail polish as well. There weren't as many um, weird nail trends as there were in 2012, like we visited in the last edition of Makeup Archives. <laughs> I will say we paid a lot more attention to nail polish launches in the early 2010s. I don't know why, I really don't. Urban Decay Naked 3. So we had Naked 1 in 2011, Naked 2 in 2012, and Naked 3 in 2013. And I remember when Naked 3 came out from Urban Decay. I really, really liked the tone of it. I liked the kind of mauve -y, pinky tones. I never ended up buying it. I only ever owned the Naked 1, but Naked 3 really, I feel like was the first time those kind of pinky tones came into the mainstream, at least in my, in this like era. Before then it had been a lot of like cool tones. It had been a lot of neutral tones like golds and grays and charcoals. But I feel like Naked 3 was kind of, I don't know, before it's time. But honestly, looking at the color story, there's like five shades in here that are exactly the same. I don't know why I was so obsessed with this back when it came out. Cause looking at it now, I'm like, what is this? <laughs> this looks, no. Why? They had like one dark kind of maroony brown, I don't know. And then it was just a lot of light tone mauves. Ah, so weird, so weird. Next, um, I don't think I mentioned this in my holiday video. Riri Hearts Mac, I was like, Mac, Riri Hearts Mac. It was a Mac collection that Rihanna did. And it was, I believe, I think this was after Riri Wu because Riri Wu was also 2013, but it was earlier in 2013, which was essentially just a rebranding of Ruby Wu with Rihanna's signature on it. They expanded that and did like a whole Rihanna collection for the holiday 2013. And they did some nail polishes, some eyeshadows, a cheek product, and then three different lipsticks. And this was, I mean, this was pre-Fenty, obviously. Like that's, it's so funny, like thinking of like Rihanna and makeup, but pre-Fenty, what a time. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty, it was basic, but you know, who knows? This might've been part of what got Rihanna into wanting to make makeup in the first place. I don't know. Um, This one I also didn't see and I didn't mention in my holiday collection video. Anna Sui and Minnie Mouse. <laughs> Anna Sui did a Minnie Mouse collection. And this was how they used to do Disney collabs, like way back in the day. They used to do like original, like Mickey and Minnie Mouse themed or like old, like Ariel and Snow White type collections. I think, was it Besame that did a Snow White collection? I think it was, but Anna Sui is one of those brands that you see at Kohl's and I think only Kohl's. Not Zoo Lily, but that other one, Holt Look. Holt Look and Kohl's are the only places I ever saw Anna Sui. And honestly, the packaging on this is really cute. Like, 
I dig it. I wouldn't buy it, but it's cute as hell. There was like lipsticks and nail polishes. Again, every collection came with a nail polish. That's so funny to me, because now I don't see anybody like doing nail polish with larger collections, you know? It just feels kind of weird and of a different time. But <laughs> as I was scrolling through Temptalia, <laughs> Urban Decay, ColourPop was not the first brand to do these like vault collections, okay? Urban Decay used to do them too. And they did an entire Urban Decay, the mother load shadow set and 24 seven glide on eyeliner vault. Uh, how many, sh 68 eyeshadows for $595. <laughs> um, Urban Decay, that feels a little bit excessive because that was at $8.79 per eyeshadow. And that's pretty expensive for a single eyeshadow when you get down to brass taxes but $600 for every single Urban Decay eyeshadow. The fact that 68 eyeshadows can be $600 versus the crap that Morphe comes out with 35 eyeshadows for $20. There's a discrepancy here and it's weird. I like how in here it's like 595, but a $1,234 value. Yeah, cause we're gonna spend $1,200 on single eyeshadows from Urban Decay. Oh my God, that's hilarious. What? Oh my God. The thing is with Urban Decay is that their single eyeshadows were so like unnecessarily bulky. It's like, just put out the pans, like just put out the pans, you know? They also came out with the Moon Dust shadows in 2013, like the first time and they just relaunched them. So it's been eight years since the Moon Dust shadows like hit the market, fun times. Uh, Mac launched their Retro Matte collection in fall of 2013. And the Retro Matte lipsticks were essentially the matte lipsticks, but like more dry. Um, so it was like even more matte than the matte lipsticks um, because I had a bunch of the MAC matte lipsticks. We'll get into some of them later, but the retro matte were like even more powdery and dry. I never liked the formula of that. I never liked the retro matte formula. I thought they were very uncomfortable, but oh God, retro matte 2013. That was eight years ago, that's crazy. Essie, fall of 2013, for the twill of it. Essie and Zoya and China Glaze and OPI, people paid way too much attention to those nail polish brands in like 2012 to 2014. I don't know what stronghold that Essie and Zoya and China Glaze and OPI had on the makeup industry, I don't know. But I mean, these were pretty colors, but like for the twill of it, they always had these like punny names. And I think, I mean, obviously nail polish brands are still coming out with these collections, but like you don't have beauty YouTubers doing like breakdowns of nail polish collections. There's like nail polish YouTube and then beauty YouTube. They've separated since then. <laughs> I mean, the colors are pretty, they're like metallic and jewel tone. I don't know, there's like a duochrome in here. That duochrome is kind of nice though. It's like a greeny teal to pink. Interesting. NARS came out with a radiant cream compact foundation, which I don't remember at all. Yeah, I mean, NARS has had like plenty of foundations through the years, but I do not remember their cream compact foundation. Now cream compacts are really coming back. I feel like people are digging into the kind of more emollient balmy texture for foundations. So if NARS brought this back or if they still have it, I don't even know. If they still have it, I'll just, editing me. But again, I feel like this was a little bit before it's time because I feel like back in 2013, people were still really on that like liquid foundation train. Like, I mean, I use liquid foundation obviously, but a cream compact, I feel like the only brands that were really doing well with cream compact foundations was Mac. I don't remember this. I do not remember this at all. Butter London is one of those brands that I got so enamored with and so obsessed with everything about the design aesthetic, the bottles were pretty, the colors were cool. I loved everything about it because it was like, ooh, they got a fun font and it's like British themed. These were like $14 nail polishes. Why did I ever think a $14 nail polish was worth it? Never ever again. Like I owned, I think four Butter London nail polishes, maybe five, but buying $14 nail polishes gave me this like, I don't know, false sense of this is gonna last a really long time on my nails. It never 
was worth it. It lasted just as long as the Sally Hansen nail polishes, just as long as the friggin' Revlon nail polishes never lasted longer on my nails. I don't even wear no nail polish anymore. I was obsessed with the Butter London ones. I don't know why. Butter London and then Julep. Julep was another one that I got on that train shortly thereafter. Julep is actually made in Seattle. But Butter London, man, they had some fun colors. I'm not gonna lie. It was just $14 nail polishes. No. <laughs> Next. Mac, back at it again. Tropical Taboo was the name of the line and like the, the images and like the, again, the branding photo shoots, gorgeous, beautiful. But something about the um, the description and like the, the PR text really, um, let's just read it and, and you can see for yourself. The lore of the Latin beat. Mac captures the passion of Samba in a shimmering color collection that pulsates with sensuality. Tropical Taboo gives in to the heat, beat, and exotic glamour of shades that define desire. One note, one hip-popping turn, one penetrating look, and you're hooked. Eyes reflect the dynamic tempo with the dazzle of mineralized eyeshadows and vivid pigments, including cha-cha-cha and tropica. Full luscious lips glisten with a tantalizing top layer of cream sheen glass and fever isle and calypso beat. For profession, and then they talk about eyeshadow brushes. Why were they trying to write an erotic novel with the uh, descriptions of the products? That sounds kind of weird. I don't like that. But the colors, they had lip glosses, uh, lipsticks, and then the like swirly mineralized eyeshadow things where like a bunch of colors are all swirled in one. I don't know why any brand thought that those were gonna like work really, really well. They look pretty, don't get me wrong, they look gorgeous, but having like multiple colors swirled together to where like if they blended, they don't really make like anything close to what's in the pan. So like having like a blue and a red and a brown in a palette, it's like, that seems a little bit weird. Having like a mineralized eyeshadow that's like an orange to pink to yellow, like having those kind of combined, that makes sense. But like these were all kind of like very different. I mean, some of them were different. This one was like teal and purple, which feels like a weird thing to combine into one eyeshadow. I don't know. I just had to read the description of the collection. I was like, oh, you guys are horny. Ooh, this was a collection that uh, Estee Lauder did as a collaboration with Mad Men. I never watched that show, so I have no idea. Like, I just know I like John Hamm. Like, John Hamm. John Hamm. Uh, <laughs> but they did a collection with Estee Lauder, and honestly, it's very cute. It's very retro looking. They had a nail polish that came in like the old kind of retro vintage looking nail polish bottles. The lipstick was this gold component that had like kind of ridges on there. And then the compact had a really pretty paisley mid-century kind of design on it. And it was all gold and it's very cute. I feel like Estee Lauder lost a lot of their sparkle in the last five years or so. And honestly, like I've only ever owned like two lipsticks, I think from them. They used to kind of have that hold on like the retro classic kind of look. And I feel like people might be into that now. Maybe not from Estee Lauder, just because like Estee Lauder's boring as hell. I feel like if another brand came in that wasn't Besame and did in a way that's like high quality and like authentic, I feel like people would really like it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I would at least. I think that would be cool. As much as I love eyeshadow palettes and like having things on display, I feel like something really lovely about those kind of classic lipstick components and the compacts that just look really nice on like a bathroom counter. I don't know. Pretty stuff. Okay, next one. Holy moly. Ooh, Hayley Williams did a collection with MAC. Hayley Williams did a collection with MAC and it was a four part collection. There was a nail polish called Riot Gear, uh, Lightscapade, which was a mineralized skin finish, a highlighter that I actually had, which was like a kind of opalescent white kind of highlighter. And then Daydreaming was a coral eyeshadow. And then Sounds Like Noise, which was a true bright kind of yellowy orange lipstick that was a matte formula. I had that. I had it. I liked it. I decluttered it a long time ago because I just like never really wore it. And when I started dyeing my hair like green and purple, like the orange, bright orange lipsticks like didn't quite go with all my hair colors. I think that's kind of when I stopped wearing super bright lipstick, when I started dyeing my hair super bright colors. My purple fades really fast in the sun because sun bleaching is real. If you can tell, see the top layer, it's all fucking blonde. And then when you pull it back, 
where the purple doesn't hit the sun, it's still purple. Sun bleaching, that's why this side is way more faded than this side. The pink stays and this side sees the sunlight in the morning when I'm driving to work. That was a random tangent. But yeah, Haley Williams, do another collection with Mac, please. Thanks. <laughs> this was such a fun lipstick. It was like a true orange. There was like no red to it. It was like yellowy orange, not lady danger, not morange. It was orange. Ooh, NARS Creamy Radiant Concealer launched in 2013. This I, was one of those like cultural resets I was mentioning earlier. I bought the NARS Creamy Radiant Concealer for years, I think. It was like a good two or three years before I decided to move away from it and go more cruelty free. And also because the fucking concealers are like $29, really expensive. But I will say, still one of my favorite concealers I've ever used. And I started using it because of Jackie Ina back in the day, cause like she really loved it. And I also think Estee Lalonde used it as well. Yes, Estee Lalonde and Jackie Ina both used the NARS Creamy Radiant Concealer. I bought it, I loved it. I went through it way too fast. And so I would like have to repurchase it all the time. And I was like, this is way too much money for me to have to repurchase this. Nars Creamy Radiant Concealer, still around. Still, I feel like one of the best concealers I've ever used. It's so good. This was a collection that I hadn't even heard about when it came out because back then I really wasn't paying attention to Shantikai stuff. I still don't re really pay attention to Shantikai stuff, but sometimes I'll see like Kate the Great or Teresa's dad mention Shantikai and I just like get a little glimpse into the brand. But they did a Save the Sharks palette, which was just like a quad that had little like shark fins in it. Very cute. Color story, a little bit weird, $83. I mean, I know Shantikai is like, it's luxury. It's over the top expensive. I'm not the demographic, I know. It was really cute actually, like a little shark fin kind of thing. Like, I also love, love sharks. Like sharks are cool as hell. And I feel like I kind of got my love for sharks when I worked at Lush cause they would do like a shark fin soap. Didn't actually have shark fin in it, but it had like a little cardboard fin on it. It was interesting seeing that Shantikai did that as well. Cause I had never heard that. Sharks are cool as hell and more people need to pay attention to them cause they are awesome. And they are, um, there's not enough of them left. Uh, ooh, this was one that I remember vividly. Mac did a Archie Comics collection, uh, Mac Archie's Girls collection for 2013. And this was some of the cutest packaging I had seen Mac do in a long time. I mean, Mac used to do like great packaging pretty much in every collection, but these were so freaking cute. They had like little quads for Betty and Veronica and they had like a heart-shaped powder and then lip glosses. And I think, was that a mascara too? And nail polishes again, but they had like, an, uh, a Veronica and a Betty kind of collection within the entire collection. The branding images are just so cute. Yeah, I mean, this was back before Riverdale when like Archie Comics was still kind of like this image and now everybody thinks of Archie Comics as like Riverdale. I've never watched Riverdale in my life, but I know it's based on Archie Comics and that Jughead is Zach or Cody. I don't know which one he is. Cute collection though, very cute collection. Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder came out in 2013. And I believe when they came out with this, there weren't a lot of shades. There's still not a lot of shades as far as like shade variation. Hourglass has been around for eight years and they still don't have like actual shades that work for everyone. Um, so like Hourglass, get on that shit. It's been eight years, okay? Like you haven't really expanded the shade range that much. There's like slight variations on like the blushes and the bronzers and stuff. But I remember when this first came out, I was like, ooh, this is kind of innovative. It's like a powder, but it's not matte and it's not a highlighter. It's like a finishing powder. I also never bought one of these. I bought, I have like a, a set of like blushes, like a trio of blushes from Hourglass, but that's the only thing I think I have from Hourglass. Um, I was also using uh, Bare Minerals powder foundation back then. So I really didn't use a lot of like finishing powders. <laughs> like I didn't have a setting powder because like my foundation was powder. But yeah, that, that came out in 2013. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Matte Candy Yum Yum became permanent in 2013. I also owned that. I owned Candy Yum Yum. And that one was a retro matte. I remember when I bought it, I was like, yes, I finally have the brightest pink possible. But then when I put it on, I was like, this is so uncomfortable. I hate it. Like it was, it looked so bad on me. 
Like it looked bad. Like it, it didn't look good. I was just obsessed with the idea of having the brightest lipstick possible, which is so funny. Speaking of which, um, Nicki Minaj did her second Viva Glam lipstick with MAC in 2013. Viva Glam Nicki 1 was like a yellow based pink and it was like a baby pink, like a, like a bright Barbie baby pink. But Viva Glam Nicki 2 was like a lavender and like on Nicki Minaj, it was like a whole look. It stood out, it was very over the top. Like it looked cool on her because she had like pink hair at the time, I think. And it was just like very much within her kind of aesthetic and her style. And I remember I was like, I could have a lavender lipstick. I could rock a lavender lipstick. That lipstick looked terrible on me. It looked so bad. Like here's an image of me wearing this lipstick. It looked bad. Why did I ever buy this? The only time this lipstick ever looked good on me was when I was using it with like a magenta lip liner and I like went all over my lips with the lip liner and then put the lavender in the middle. Otherwise it looked like shit. I don't see that many brands coming out with lavender lipsticks these days, but who knows, people might be into it. Right, would you be into a lavender lipstick? Like a light ass, like powdery lavender? I mean, I see like lavender lip glosses and stuff, but like a lav, like a lavender cream lipstick. It was, it was a look. It was a look. It just didn't look good. The lipstick looked terrible. Ooh, Too Faced. This was back in the early days of Too Faced when they had all of their palettes in this very specific layout where there were like three larger shades and then six smaller ones. And this was their boudoir eyes. And all of Too Faced palettes looked like this on the outside. It was very like streamlined with all of the designs of the palettes. And this was before the chocolate bar palette, I think. This had to have been before the chocolate bar palette. Maybe not, I don't know. But Boudoir Eyes, this is just like a cool tone, smoky eye. <laughs> and it always made me chuckle with these palettes specifically because they had these like little cards on the inside that showed like, where do you place the eyeshadow? And I will say this was in like earlier makeup YouTube and people didn't necessarily like know how to do a smoky eye as easily. Nowadays, you have 12 year olds doing perfect cut crease smoky eyes on Instagram. Back in the day, you had people like using shitty little like photo booth camera tutorials with like sparkly Windows Movie Maker transitions, trying to figure out where to put things. And so, I mean, like this is definitely a product of the times, but it is funny just looking back and seeing like how little we knew as a collective makeup community because it was early on in YouTube. That's fun though. That's fun. Drugstore products, I will say, there's not as many archives, as much information about them on the internet. So it's a little bit harder to find because you'd have to go digging through like random one-off blogs of people. So many of those like makeup blogs from back in the day have since been like deleted from the internet. Like the websites don't work anymore because makeup blogs, beauty blogs were a thing of that time. Truly, people don't, you don't see that many blogs nowadays besides like the big ones. Uh, Revlon did the nearly naked makeup. And this was when Emma Stone was like the face of Revlon. Remember that? Remember those times before Emma Stone was like an Academy Award winning actress and she was just like the face of Revlon. Revlon, I think at this point had the color stay and then the photo ready foundations. I don't remember what other foundations they had, but I think this was the newest version of their foundation. This is incredibly sheer lightweight foundation. One problem, the shades run from a sheer light beigey orange to a uh, dark beigey orange. Um, so yeah, oh God, that shade range was, oh wow. Wow, what? Oh, that is an orange foundation. Ooh, wow, ooh, oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh no. That's bad, that's bad. So that's all the stuff. That's all the products I uh, saved on my phone. Um, <laughs> like I said, if you wanna hear more about specifically holiday products that I might not have touched on in this video, I have a link in a card um, to when I did all holiday stuff from 2010 to 2014 during Vlogmas. Go watch that if you're curious. I will also leave a link to the playlist of the other Makeup Archives videos that I've done because this is absolutely one of my favorite series to do on my channel now. Looking at the old things and kind of putting them within a new context is always kind of fun, um, especially because like it literally doesn't matter. <laughs> like it doesn't matter because it's old. It's old news, you know, but it's fun, especially because a lot of you haven't been around as long as I have. So 
Yeah. I feel like someone needs to make a super cut of how many times I've reminded people how long I've been on YouTube. It would be a long video. Let me know in the comments if you remember any of these products and if you still own them, if you used them. If you own that Nicki Minaj lipstick like I did, uh, let me know. <laughs> For today's song of the day, it is Keeper by Rainwolf, and uh, Rainwolf just released a new music video for this the other day. Um, very cool, very good music video. I really enjoy his music. Um, I saw him play the Showbox, I think in 2017 or 20, no, 2018, I think. It was 2018. And I just, I just love him, he's great. Straight up rock and roll, huge fan. Um, definitely check out the music video. I will leave a link to it in the description down below, as well as links to all my social media, um, my Instagram, my Twitter, my uh, Twitch, uh, my PO box will also be down there. Yeah, uh, I hope you are staying safe. I hope you are staying home. I hope you're having a good week. Um, I hope you are able to get vaccinated. Washington opens up for everyone on the 15th. Definitely keep track of when you're eligible and when you're able to go get your vaccine. Still mask up, social distance, wash your hands, do everything the same, but you just aren't as anxious all the time. None of my behavior has changed. I'm just less terrified. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Uh, I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye.